Okay, hi there. My name is Ian Middleton. I am a travel and landscape photographer, and this is one of my quick photography tips. Now, today I'm going to show you a super simple way to create a time lapse video using Adobe Photoshop. Now, of course, the first thing that you need to do is to capture your photos. Now, uh, to do this, you're going to need a tripod and you're going to need a shutter release cable okay uh, so you need to choose your scene your frame like I have done here and set everything up onto the tripod and then you're going to need to be able to lock the shutter open so that it takes sequential photos one after another now um, I took this photo in the middle of the day uh, so it was quite bright. Now when doing this you've got two options. If you have a shutter release that has a timer or an interval timer on it you can actually set it to shoot in intervals of 30 seconds, one minute or whatever you want to do. Or uh, you can do what I did because I don't have a shutter release like that. I put a neutral density graduated filter Oh, sorry, I put a neutral density filter on my lens to stop down the exposure to, as you can see here, two and a half seconds. And then I locked my shutter to take sequential photos, each one at two and a half seconds. I basically set it up, I locked it on, and I left it running until the battery died. Now you can see down here I took a total of 630 photos, <laughs> quite a bit really. Okay, so the first thing you can do, now the great thing of, about doing time lapse with photos is that you can edit the photos. So you, usually the first thing I do is open up all my photos in Adobe Camera Raw. And if you come over here, if you select the first photo and then you press down Control and A, okay and it selects all of your photos so in this case it selected 600 all 630 of my photos so what I can do there is go over and make all of my adjustments and, on, and those adjustments will be applied to every single photo because you want your photos to look uniform to look the same otherwise it's going to look odd in your time lapse once you've done that I usually then go in save the images I save the images as a JPEG and away we go. So I'm not going to do that because I've already done it. So we're going to cancel out of that and we're going to take a look at the next stage. Okay, so here you can see I've saved all of my JPEGs into this folder here, JPEG2. And here are all 650 odd of my photos. Okay, I'm um, going to open the first one. Now, to make life easier, uh, I'm going to resize all of the photos, okay, because um, HD video has a pixel size of 1940 wide by 1080 high. So, I'm going to resize my pictures to fit that. Now, obviously the aspect ratio of these pictures is not wide angle so I'm only going to resize the height so I go in here and I select 1080 I always select by cubic sharper for reduction make sure that your constraint proportions is selected and click OK that now resizes <coughs> the image okay now to do each one of those manually is going to take ages so I usually create an action down here in the action palettes and then I'll do that to all 650 photos okay so now I've got that set again let's close that because I've already got I've already done them here <coughs> in JPEG 3 are all 650 photos resized to a pixel height of 1080 so it's going to make creating your video much quicker okay ok 
Okay, so the next step is to go up here to Window and change your workspace to Motion. This brings up this timeline down here. Okay, now as I said, it's super simple. So all I have to do once I've changed my workspace to Motion is open, navigate to the folder with all the photos that I have, single click the first picture and come down here make sure you tick image sequence then open choose your frame rate typically uh, 30 frames per second is the best but you could choose whatever you think is best click OK and down here you're gonna see your timeline and your videos. If you click play it's going to run through it slowly. Okay, stop that. Next step is simply to export your video. So come down to file, export, render video. Opens up this little dialog box here. Change your file name to whatever you want it to be. I'm going to call this Kamik Alps because that's the name of these mountains. Make sure you don't erase this .mp4 because that's the, the video extension. Select the folder where you want to save your video. Okay, so I'm going to select the folder where all my pictures are. Okay. Here we are time-lapse okay down here Adobe Media Encoder here you've got several formats the best format is this H.264 choose your preset size that's the size of my images so I'm going to keep that the way it is okay preset uh, frame rate if you come down here you can select your frame rate so you can change that to 30 you can change it to 60 whatever you want it to be and then over here again preset video type I usually go with the one that is selected make sure it's a uh, HD 1080i but there are many others down here that you can choose from if you're gonna if you want to create it for an Android phone or anything else you can select it there but I usually leave the preset set okay and that's it then simply click render And now sit back and wait for Photoshop to render your time-lapse video. Well that was fast wasn't it? <laughs> Unfortunately it didn't quite go that fast, I had to speed up the video. Maybe your computer will be a bit faster than mine. So here's the result. Okay, so as you've just seen, the this time-lapse video doesn't completely fill the frame of the wide-angle format. So that's because, as I explained earlier, the aspect ratio of the photos are not wide format. So if you want your time-lapse video to fill the entire frame, you need to crop your photos into wide format. So I'm going to do that now with this picture. Now, of course, I want to keep the sky. As you saw, most of the action was in the sky. The foreground um, is relatively still, other than some shadows and light moving across it. So I could afford to lose the bottom here. Okay, But I also need to make sure that when I crop it, I don't crop this part here off. So you can see that um, the first thing I might do is um, change the width to 1940 to resize but if I um, if I then adjust my height to 1080 
and set my anchor here so that it crops from the bottom it crops off part of my village down here I don't want that so I'm going to undo that and instead I'm going to manually crop from here so I make sure that I get my village in okay and then I'm going to do the canvas crop and then set my height to 180 crop this time from the top and I've only cropped a little bit of the sky off here so now I've got a nicer image okay image with lots of sky I've got my village in the hills down here on the bottom and everything looks nice so I want to do that to all of the images so in order to do that as I explained earlier I'm going to create a wide angle video uh, action wide angle video action okay so in order to do that I'll show you here you need to have your actions palette open if you don't have it go up to window select actions so you can put it down here in your workspace I've already done one here but I'll, um, I'll delete all of that and I'll do it again just to show you how it's done so let's delete that too okay now you come down here to this selection and you have to create a new action give it a name so I'll give it wide angle video and click record now this is going to record every action that you do so now I'm going to do what I said earlier So I'm going to set my width to 1940 then I'm going to crop just here and then I'm going to create my canvas size pixels to 1080 set my anchor down here click OK proceed then I'm going to save I'm going to save it in a folder I've already prepared here click save maximum 12 always save your JPEGs at maximum 12 and close now I've lost my palette so I'm gonna to have to open the image to get it back and then stop I'm gonna make sure I delete that last action because I don't want it to keep opening that same picture every time and that's it so in order to apply that to all of those pictures I need to go to file automate batch make sure I've got the set and the action here and the folder this is my source folder so it's already there but um, this is where my original JPEG images are the full-size ones I select that as the folder and away we go click OK and now this is going to apply that action to all 650 photos it's going to take a while so I'm off for a cup of tea well that was nice a cup of tea that is uh, it takes quite a bit of time to crop uh, 630 photos 630 actually not 650 as I said mistakenly earlier so that's why it's very good to use this actions feature in Photoshop so they're all done I'm going to make my time-lapse video so I'm going to close this picture go back up and change my workspace again to motion open select my first image image sequence open select my frame rate 30 frames per second okay and then go to export and render video now this time because I've changed it uh, my preset size is not correct okay they were the dimensions that I had my previous photo set to so I can simply select document size and that will reset that to the size of my pictures everything else is set I'm going to give it another name Camnique Alps wide 
and saved in the same folder as before and render and away we go so hope you've enjoyed that hope you found it useful and as you can see it's a super simple way to create a time-lapse video using Adobe Photoshop if you don't have Adobe Photoshop I highly recommend that you subscribe to the Adobe Photographer's Plan which is only around £10 per month and with that you get Photoshop and Lightroom and they're continuously updated so it's a really really good deal I'll put a link in the subscription in the description about that and that's about it catch you later hope you've enjoyed this um, if you did please give the video a like and make a comment below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and that's it uh, here comes the video